black grass who classes are long. He goes on and on about this dear poem. Then he goes one step further. And he looks around the room and he says, I want everybody to write an animal poem. And an ode is a praise poem. It's a poem that takes something small and simple and elevates it. Like Neruda's ode to the socks or ode to the artichokes. And so he goes to one class and he's like, what would you write your own about? And my class he says, I would write about the black girl. This is not an original answer. Any of the English majors, anybody who studied English knows that. <laughs> and I wonder if our ancestors dreamt this. If together in their respective tongues, they cast forward a net of collective premonition, opened their eyes to the dawn and saw us, the reflection of their children's children, in the horizon, we honor them. Every time we meet the challenge of the present day and do not succumb to complacency or the comfort of privilege, every time we face ourselves and tell ourselves to be less so that others can be more, what key don't we hold knowing well we own all of the lines? We are the printers of blues and of blueprints, using our pens and our words and our lives to create bridges for the broken and never serve for an award you believe you deserve. Use your hands and your words and the seeds will emerge. We may not see the fruit, but we carry the roots and realize we move forward every time we give back. It's the truth because with goodwill and sweat, we'll heal the world where it hurts. Living is short. Never regret the moments if you met them or how you spent them. And one day, the children will wonder, if we were the ones that dreamt them, if we were the ones that dreamt them, if right now, in this moment, at this conference, we are dreaming for them. could be separated from one or two parents due to ending DACA, TPS, and inhumane and unnecessary enf enforcement around our cities should make you stand up. Gracias Unidos, more than a recognition, this award is a recommitment for Latino Memphis to double our efforts. Thank you. Thank you to our entire team, and thank you for all the young people and all the families in Memphis who have spoken out to legislators, to the media, to the public. Please know that your stories are changing hearts and changing minds. To my fellow athletes, if you are already doing advocacy work, continue to do so. It is now more important than ever. If you are thinking about doing this work, or you're new to this work, be brave. Do it. This is the time to do it. If it's not now, then when? If it's not now, if it's not us, then who? Are you exhausted and overwhelmed? Are you worried that a board member or a funder might leave you? Concerned that some people might criticize for some of the things that you do or that you say? Well, I'm here to tell you, all of those things can and will happen. It's not going to get any easier anytime soon. But this is the small price that we have to pay to keep our families together. Be creative. Be strategic. You will 
where you will gain new friends and new supporters. Most importantly, you will be doing work that is transforming lives. So, if it's, again, if it's not now, if it's not now, if it's not us, then who and then when? We all have la oportunidad y la responsabilidad of being advocates in our own way and in our own right. As you have heard, Yancy and I just became US citizens a couple of months ago, and we're going to be voting for the first time in two months. Not only for us, but for the many people like us who are silent at the polls. That is advocacy. And at Latino Memphis, we have committed to register a thousand new registrars in Memphis to get to the polls this year. Don't miss opportunity. Think about the six million children that I told you about earlier and their families. We owe it to them, and we owe it to the millions of families that we may never get to know. This award is for them. We are already the home of the brave. Let's continue to make our home the land of the brave, which is my place. The simple truth is that the LGBTQ community is as diverse as the fabric of this nation. We are Muslim. We are Jewish. Hola. So look who's with us in Washington, D.C. Hi. My mother. <laughs> we're about to go find a parking spot for her car. Then we're gonna go. This way. Then we're gonna go buy us uh, some food and some clothes for tonight's last dinner gala. And then we're gonna go back to the hotel, get ready, explore tomorrow, and then we're going to Connecticut for the rest of the trip. I will check in with you guys, Borita. Bye. Living 
Good morning, friends. Today is our last day in Washington, D.C. We are getting breakfast at Bus Boys and Poets. We went there on Friday when we got here, but we want to try out the breakfast and we are starving. Then we're going to take my mom to explore Washington, D.C. a little bit and check out all the monuments. And then we're going to go home to Connecticut. It's, it's going to be awesome. So we will take you guys along the journey with us on our last day of Washington, D.C. So we got the avocado panini with the tempeh bacon, sweet potato fries. Errol got the avocado. Sweet fried plantains and vegan sour cream. And my mom got some non vegan breakfast, sweet potato pancakes, scrambled, and fruit stuff. Yummy! <laughs> Taking us to the damn casinos. In the middle of nowhere, 
This wasn't part of the plan. Ooh, that's a big winner getting me. Yes.